Now at 11, KGW investigates the scammers going after people desperate to find their stolen cars. Yeah, I can give you the address, but you've got to pay. You've got to pay. How much do you want us to pay? Plus, families of 9-11 victims take a stand against a local golf tournament backed by Saudi Arabia. It's shameful, it's disgraceful, and this should never have been allowed to happen. And later, a big blow to the Pac-12. How Oregon teams could be impacted by UCLA and USC leaving the conference. Your news starts now. We're going to start with breaking news. In the past hour, people were able to return to their homes following a gas leak in East Vancouver. About 100 residents on 45th Street near 151st Avenue were evacuated for several hours. The city brought in buses for them to rest in. Vancouver Fire told us the leak was caused by a homeowner who accidentally ruptured a gas line while doing repairs. The gas is now shut off. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. Tomorrow, Oregon's minimum wage increases again. On one hand, it's not keeping pace with inflation, but on the other, many businesses have already raised their wages to try to attract staff. Alma McCarty spoke with a recruiter and an economist to get a look at the big picture. In 2016, Oregon's minimum wage was set at $9.25 per hour. Since then, it's gone up every year, though by how much depends on where you live. Starting July 1st, most of Oregon will see a 75 cent raise. Wages within the Portland urban growth boundary will remain the highest at $14.75 an hour. Near Oregon's other more populated areas, the blue on this map, the minimum wage goes to $13.50. Rural areas, those in green, will see an increase to $12.50. As of the last time we increased the minimum wage uh, in the summer of 2021, about 5% of all jobs in Oregon were paid the minimum wage. Gail Krummenauer, the state employment economist, says that percentage spans all industries and is typical. Most jobs do pay more. But right now, many entry-level positions also offer new workers a good bit more. We've had more job openings than unemployed workers since the summer of 2021. So in that type of low unemployment and high competition environment for workers, we have seen that a lot of uh, jobs are starting above minimum wage. It's a high demand for people to work and we're, we're willing to pay the people what they deserve. Vanessa Martinez works for the Hospitality Staffing Solutions Portland branch, staffing local hotels with housekeeping services. They're recruiting workers with a starting pay of $19.50 an hour. Even though it is a typical a job that's typically paid minimum wage, I feel like it, it goes down to how many people are wanting to be employed in housekeeping. And so I think that's kind of our drive to keep our pay rates at a, pay, at a rate where people are going to be like, I want to do that. In 2023, the state's incremental increases will end and minimum wage in Oregon will go back to being set according to the inflation rate. That was how things were done prior to 2016. The idea was that the minimum wage would maintain its purchasing power over the year so that it would keep up with the cost of living for minimum wage workers. Currently, Krummenauer explains average hourly earnings for Oregonians have not been keeping up with inflation for the past several months. So on average, we are seeing that workers paychecks aren't going as far. Now, despite the dollar not going as far, Oregon's three minimum wages, again determined by geography, are still among the top in the nation. The highest minimum wage in 2022 will be in Washington, D.C. at $16.10, followed by California at $15 an hour. Washington State's wage is $14.49. Laurel. Thank you, Alma. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, a man is now charged with attempted murder in a brutal attack on a houseless person in Portland's Old Town. Police say Spencer Kilpatrick repeatedly stabbed a man outside the Blanchet House. It's an organization that helps those living on the streets. The victim, who goes by the name Scotty, suffered life-threatening injuries in what's believed to be an unprovoked attack. This is the second time a houseless person was attacked outside the Blanchet House this year.
The University of Oregon has finalized the deal to buy the former Concordia University campus in Northeast Portland. Students will be on campus in the fall of 2023. The new campus will house the Balmer Institute for Children's Behavioral Health and other programs. Oregon also has a location in the White Stag Building in Old Town, but the future of that campus is in jeopardy. And just a reminder, Washington license plate fees are going up tomorrow. When you get a new plate, expect to pay $50 instead of 10. The money will go toward funding Washington's transportation initiatives. The golf tournament backed by the Saudi Arabian government has begun in Washington County and was met by protesters. They say the Live Golf Tournament at Pumpkin Ridge Golf Course is a clear example of sports washing, spending money to deflect from the government's reported human rights abuses. Today, families of some who died in the 9-11 attacks spoke outside the tournament, hoping the players and others taking part would hear their message. After 9-11, this country and the American people swore to never forget. Well, here we are, nearly 21 years later, with no justice, and the responsible parties are being allowed to operate on American soil with impunity. It is shameful, it is wrong, it is hurtful. EcoTrust, a nonprofit that hosted a live golf draft party at its Portland event space Tuesday, has now apologized for its involvement. Tonight in a KGW investigation, a vehicle is stolen every 48 minutes in Portland on average, and scammers are taking notice. Kylie Boshi found out they're preying on the victims during an already stressful time. You'd think a 40-foot motorhome couldn't just disappear. It's, you know, it's huge. At least that's what Lisa Olson figured until someone ripped off her motorhome near Delta Park while she and her husband were off watching their son's baseball games. Never, ever in a million years did the thought cross our mind that it could get stolen. Like many others who've had their vehicle stolen, Lisa scrambled to get the word out, posting pictures and a description of her missing motorhome. My first step was to jump on social media and just like try and get it on Facebook as fast as I can because the power of social media is incredible. Soon, Lisa started getting direct messages from complete strangers suggesting she reach out to a company on Instagram that helps recover stolen vehicles. Desperate for help, she did. The company claimed to be ethical hackers who had access to all kinds of surveillance systems and could recover her stolen vehicle via beep location technology. They messaged, I will run a beep location test on your vehicle, VIN, to confirm the tacking capacity. If it responds, then I'll track it. You know, I'm not mechanical. I was like, okay, it sounds like, it sounds like something that can probably be done. When Lisa provided the address where her motorhome was stolen, the so-called hacker sent her an image of the location. And when she shared the vehicle's VIN number, they responded with all kinds of details about the make and model. It's information that's readily available to anyone on the Internet. But in that moment of desperation, it seemed legit. It was convincing. He's like, I have your vehicle location located. Until they asked for money, $1,500. After payment, we share the current address of your vehicle. Lisa stopped messaging and didn't send any money. And I was like, Ooh, that was enough to give me pause and be like, OK, over the past year, Portland has seen a rash of stolen vehicles. On average, a car is stolen every 48 minutes, and scammers have taken notice, preying on crime victims. All right, here's another message from another fake Facebook profile. Cody Williams was inundated with similar messages after his car was stolen in February. Cody, I saw your post about your stolen car. I suggest you contact this company on Instagram. They helped recover mine a few days ago. So you got a lot of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could scroll down. I got for days. The companies claiming to help use a variety of names and profiles on Instagram. To better understand how it all works, we messaged Ninth Tech on Instagram, the same so-called hackers Lisa interacted with. They explained, we recover stolen vehicle via beep location tech and CCTV hack. He's giving me the same spiel he gave Lisa, basically. There's live cameras he can hack into. He can track our vehicle. It's the same song and dance. The so-called hacker claimed to have found our vehicle, which was never stolen. I just got signals coming from the speedometer and odometer of your vehicle. 
then just as I'm messaging, explaining that I'm a news reporter. Oh. Instagram audio. He's calling. Ready? This is Kyle. Yeah, I can give you the address, but you've got to pay. You've got to pay. How much do you want us to pay? Um, 500. 500, and how can we pay? Um, we accept payment via PayPal. Um, are you, do you understand how crypto transactions work? I'm an investigative news reporter with KGW Television in Portland, Oregon. And I'm working on a story on scammers who prey on people who had their cars stolen. He hung up. If anybody from Instagram says they are a hacker and can help you find your car, that is not true at all. Titan Crawford helps run the PDX Stolen Cars Facebook page. He warns these so-called hackers can't really locate your stolen car. Plus, there's no need to pay. Tens of thousands of volunteers are willing to help for free using social media. And it's just something we do. We drive to work and we see a vehicle that looks suspicious. We run the plate, confirm it's stolen, and then we try and track down the owner. Facebook groups like PDX Stolen Cars and PNW Stolen Cars have helped countless people find their stolen vehicles. Again, for free. It's, it's awesome when we help find a vehicle including Lisa Olson. Volunteers on PDX Stolen Cars and PNW Stolen Cars help spread the word on Facebook about her missing motorhome. And within 24 hours, several people spotted it driving around Portland. They reported back, posting updates in real time on Facebook, and notified police, who eventually found the 40-foot motorhome abandoned along a residential street in southeast Portland. Throughout this whole thing, the only thing that, that still makes me emotional is um, how many good people there were who helped us. It appears someone had broken into the motorhome, got it started, and took it for a joyride. You want to see the locks that got drilled out? Lisa said there were signs of drug use. The inside was pretty trashed, and valuables were stolen. But most importantly, it came back in one piece. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's, all, it's it, Like I said, it's kind of surreal that the whole thing disappeared, but the thought that we have it back is... Um, you know, it's our home. Oh, it's, it's our second home. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we're ecstatic to have it back. So glad they do have it back. Did you just love it when Kyle talked to the scammer and the scammer hung up? That was, was classic. You can hear more from Kyle, including what he learned was behind many of the car thefts by checking out today's episode of the story. Really worth watching. You'll find it on the KGW YouTube channel.